Okay, apparently this is how this week is gonna start. I'm not even ready to start the video yet. It's actually the week prior. I haven't even edited last week's video. We're just filming the video, filming the outro of the video where I got these coconut palms in the mail and the palm tree company showed up with the new Adenidia palms. They're repotting the big queen palm for me and uh, they didn't mention if they have another queen palm for me. They're supposed to, so I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. All goes to plan that there will be a couple of queen palms over here in just a minute when I cut back. There will at least be one. There should be two. Hopefully they brought the new one for the one that they killed, but if not, there will at least be one. I know the lights are on. They're on a sensor. It's still dark over there. They'll turn off. It's LED. It's fine. Oh, and before I get, hey, what's up, garden friends? How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Flustered. Things are happening very quickly. I have a lot to say about this one. Oh, I have a lot to say. Hmm. It's wonky because its root mass was apparently weird, so it's got this oval shape to it but that's all right it actually might work out to my benefit because i think i'll be able to squeeze this over here into this corner better with it having that shape on it there's only the one just the one that came around the corner to bring the other palm tree and it was a huge bottle palm it was beautiful i should have taken a picture of it and uh, i sent it back because i don't i don't want it i don't know what to do with it i had the thing going over here where there were two matching palms so, I don't, what am I going to do with a bottle palm? Have it go queen, bottle, robot? I don't want that. So, hopefully, sometime in the next, who knows when, they'll bring me another queen to go over here. This it feels like it's taken forever to get the summer kicked off because these dang palm trees are taking so long. Don't usually have these issues, but, uh, well, here we are. Queens aren't hard to get a hold of, so hopefully they have one that is... A comparable size to this one so it'll also look ridiculous if they send me one that's smaller than this one to go side by side uh, it is what it is i'm gonna go ahead get this in place get it watered in wrap up the video i was working on and pick up later when it's time to talk more about that edinidia palm and what i wanted wanted i should say to do over here in this spot okay you know this actually works out perfectly also just remember that i stood back there like there's gonna be this beautiful before and after where the spot over here was empty and then there would be beautiful palm trees in place but just got the one it's fine i am confident that they will come through if not it's okay but i do think it looked better having two on each side but uh well i still have this ed and idiot to play with that's not going to work the one that they killed was about three times that size trunk wise this is it's extremely overpotted this has been a trend with the growers down in florida the i mean look at how much loose soil there is in here it hasn't been that long since this thing was in a 15 gallon pot i'm guessing it's somewhat rooted in there so it got repotted sometime in the last probably six to ten months the issue though is that the edinidia the one that they killed went right here it was beautiful it went up high and was up over your head when you'd walk out the door this thing yeah, when you look at the pot and go, oh, that's a big plant, but it's really not. I don't think that this is going to work over there. I'm going to try it. That's a lot of moving and stuff to do just to experiment. But I feel like when you walk out the door, you're just going to get hit in the face by palm fronds. And part of the appeal was when you walked out the door, you got to see that beautiful trunk. It was sort of a, a big wish to think that they would bring me one with that much trunk on it. But also not really, because I've been seeing what the growers have down there and... I guess not the place they were pulling from, but a lot of them, if you're getting at an idiot in a 25-gallon container or even a 20-gallon container, it should have much more clear trunk on it than this one does. So, I don't know. Figure that out at some point. I don't really want to keep the windmill palm over here either, though. So, I don't know. We'll get it moved over there in a couple of days. I got a lot of editing I have to do before I can get to all of that. And I guess if I were to have to prune off one two of these that wouldn't be the end of the world i could prune it all the way up top but i think that's going to look stupid i don't even need to be talking about this right now it doesn't even matter not to that point yet palm trees getting watered in remember it was just repotted and i have plants that i can put back over here. i moved a bunch of plants out of the way by a bunch i mean three i like the way <laughs> the container is bent which i know you wouldn't think would be a great thing but I can really see this working out to my advantage because now I have this perfect little slot in here <laughs> that when I bump this oleander up into a slightly larger container, that's gonna fit right in there, right between everything. And for now, I can just set it up here. And that looks fine, I like that. You got some more height, 
can see it from more areas. I think it looks stupid just having that pot sitting there, but eventually that won't even be noticeable. Uh, everything is so clean. Well, kind of. It's about to be very clean. I'm going to do some power washing out here. It's a few days later. <laughs> you know, I had to get videos edited and all that stuff. The palm trees. Well, you all saw what happened there. There's the queen. I put the Edenidia over here for right now just because, well, I don't know. It didn't make sense to leave it over there. And getting things moved around right here where I would like for the Edenidia to go, that's going to be a project. It's going to take some time. I set this one over here by this door so that I could go in and out from right here and be like, well, is it too high? Is it too... I have the door locked, so I can't do a complete walkthrough, but I'm like, is this gonna hit people in the face? And I think it might. This thing, it's just, it's a shorty. Ground over there is lower than the patio, significantly. I can try and fill it up and lift it up some. I don't know how well of a job I'll be able to do with that because I don't have many materials laying around. I don't have a lot of time to go out to the store and buy things to fill the spot in. I don't really want to fill the spot in. I had it dug out for a reason for stability. Once this is bigger, it'll just blow right over if it's not somewhat sunk down just a little bit into the ground. But, you know, I had to prune off a couple of them. It's not the end of the world. But, you know, ideally, you never prune anything off of these if you don't have to. Green is good. It helps the plant grow. And this is a very nice and full healthy looking Adenidia. I will give it that. It's just substantially smaller than the one that died. So I'm not positive it's going to work there. If it doesn't, that's okay. There are, well, there's two alternatives. You can just leave the windmill palm there. It's at a pretty annoying height though, because <laughs> it is, it has a frond that'll just get you right in the face when you walk out the door. Or maybe if it comes down to it, I could put the double over there. I mean, I don't really see why not, other than I already planted everything up underneath it, and that world, uh, oh, oh, my mouth just stopped working, and that won't really be visible from that spot. So, I don't know. It's only been in there for like two weeks. I can pull everything out and plant it up underneath the other Edenidia, which I could put over here, or maybe I'll put the windmill palm right here. What's going on? <laughs> it's just a lot of ruckus back there. I think it was just multiple streams of water hitting the beach ball would be my guess. I don't know. Uh, there's the palm tree update. Won't be handling any of that till the ender, ender, till the end of the video. Because regardless of what happens, I have to clean that whole area out, get everything out from right here around those steps, pull the windmill palm out, and repot it. I ordered a new pot for it, just one of those big rolled rim Tesco planters. It's like what I have most of the palm trees in. So 30 inch pot. It's in a 24 inch right now. It's been a few years. It deserves a repot regardless. And if I end up keeping it right there, it will be a little bit taller, which would be good because then it won't be like, you know, quite at eye level when you walk out the door there. And if I end up putting it over there in place of the double trunk at an idiot, then that'd be okay too because it'll be in a more decorative pot that fits that spot better. And today is Father's Day. That's why I'm focused on cleaning. I'm gonna be having people over. That's been the theme, my gosh, since like, I don't know, early April. I feel like every weekend, every other weekend have something going on out here, which has been good. I, it's always great spending time with people. That really motivated me to get around the table and get everything cleaned up. I had buckets and boxes and things just overflowing. Some of the seats were stacked high with filming equipment, like different tripods and adapters and all those things. The table is now completely gutted and cleaned off and have everything put away very nicely. It's all, it's really tidy. Everything is perfect. It looks great, trust me. It's sorted and organized. What was that? Did you just puke up some water in the pool turbo? That's what happens when you play with the water and you start chugging on the hose. Not a good idea. Be careful. In the meantime, okay, there we go. In the meantime, something I do want to get done this week, sooner than later, is to get all these caladiums planted. I stumbled upon another two bags of caladium bulbs that I just forgot that I had. And you can see they're doing their thing. I opened the bags up last night and spread them out so that they could dry some and I could more easily detect for rot and squish. When things are wet, it's harder to tell if anything's rotten. So that's what they're doing here, sitting out and just being apparently pretty healthy. These actually seem okay. So that's good. I have a whole bunch of those to plant up. I found some more. I forgot that I had ordered more. Uh, Kirkumas. These are the... Uh, 
Banrai Red Kirkamas, Hidden Cone Gingers. I took their little corms and put them in a glass of water last night so they could soak overnight and help bring them to life just to speed up the process because things are really hot and oddly dry right now. The humidity is not bad, like maybe 50, 60 percent, but it's like 93 <laughs> right now and I think it's like 1030 in the morning and we're gonna have several days. It's summer, almost, like right now, not really, but then the video comes out it will officially be summer. So just expecting plenty of days, triple digit temperatures and scorching hot heat. And that's why I want to make sure these things are nice and hydrated when they get into the ground. Gladiolas, these are leftover. I have the majority of the bulk bulbs planted. There's still a few of these parrot type left. And then I have a bag of these beautiful gardens, blue isle, this purpley gladiola. I don't know where to put them. Gladiolas need a lot of sun, right? You can't just stick them in a spot where they're going to get afternoon shade because then they end up being really wonky and looking funny. I put a whole bunch of them up there in the hill garden, probably 100 or so, in a spot right here and a spot over there. One of the clumps is coming up, the other one doesn't look too good. I don't want to go putting more up there if I don't know how they're going to do, so I'm not really certain. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with these. I really want to plant them. Maybe I should put them in a container. That's an option, right? I have... And No, I don't. I don't I don't have any... I don't want to put any more containers over here, and I don't think I even have any extras, which is surprising and not something that happens very often. Uh, I have this mystery container here that had bulbs in it in the springtime. I could do that. I feel like it's very shallow, though. It's nice and wide, though. That might be good. Not, uh, yeah, I don't have potting soil. Never mind. And add that to my list of things to do. Need to go get some potting soil. So those are going to have to hang out for a couple more days. Maybe I should take those inside just to be safe. But I would like to at the very least get the curcumas planted. These might need some more time to dry. So I'll stick them someplace in the shade and... That way I can have a better idea of what's... Because I don't want to end up... When they get knotted like this... I didn't even explain. I'm so sorry. They start to grow and get knotted in the bags like this. And then sometimes you have some that are rotten and suck on the inside. And when the clumps are wet, it's harder to detect when you have those rotten ones. And I don't want to plant them out with rotten growths attached to them. So that's why. Maybe I'll take this whole thing inside. But get these curcumas planted up. Because, well, they've been soaking overnight. It'd be good to get them planted. I did hit up a nursery yesterday. I was out running some errands and decided to drop by one that's down the road and picked up some fun stuff. Got some new guineas here. Don't know why. Probably going to kill them, but I'll spread them out and see how they do in various locations. I also picked up these beautiful, beautiful milkweeds. They were only like $4.50, I think, which is a great price considering their size and how full they are. Usually when I see the Kursovakias at the nurseries, it's these right here. They're labeled as blood flowers, which I don't usually see, but there's the name right there. They still have them labeled as an annual. Most nurseries are selling them as perennials now that we've been bumped up to zone seven here. Sometimes they will be perennial. It just kind of depends on your garden really and your microclimates. But what I was going to say is usually when I find these for sale at the nurseries, it's just one growth, maybe two in a container about this size. And well here, this one back here, it's a lot taller, but it doesn't look as healthy in my opinion. Which one would you pick out if you were at a nursery? I'd go with this one because it has a lot more growth. It's gonna be a nice full bushy plant. Whereas this is just a few sticks. And this was $8.99. So grab three of those. I always like to have plenty of milkweed around for the butterflies. I also finally found a foxtail fern. <sighs> Again, I need to vent. I'm not going to because it's just the same old sad story that we're all aware of. Look at the, look at, this was $24.99. This, this little foxtail fern. What? Really? 25 bucks. I went ahead and got it because I haven't been able to find them. When I do, it's just a few little sticks in a container, but you see what I wanted to do? The foxtail fern in the seashell, that's what I wanted to do. I think that'll look beautiful. Going to look fantastic. And then a couple of aphalandras. The price on these was pretty good, so I grabbed two of them. 
these have been one of those plants that have been very expensive the last few times it seems the nursery is like well over 20 bucks and i think they were like 10.99 so i said yeah i'll go ahead and get a couple of those they're really fun sturdy plants usually keep them around for a pretty long time depending on where i plant them up and uh, what they're planted underneath it depends on if i'm taking them in the growth space or if they're going back to the greenhouse right for the greenhouse and eh, not necessarily but if i put them under things that are going back into the grow space they usually overwinter very well in there there's no name on these new guineas these were i just ran by home depot to pick up some pool salt and they were there and they were 2.98 a pop so i said oh okay we'll go ahead and grab a bunch of those because i like the flowers on them i think those have some nice color to them they'll look better once they get in the ground unless i kill them that's a possibility. I realize maybe sometime this week the rest of the bromeliads might come in the mail. I don't know. They did that thing where I thought it had shipped out over a week ago, and then I went and looked at the tracking, and it just says a label has been created. I hate that. It, it drives me nuts. Stop doing that. It's really annoying. If you sell things on Etsy, don't be one of those people. These, the Kirks, love them. Need to get them planted up. All the corms still seem good. They're nice and firm. So uh, it's okay that I'm a few weeks behind on getting them planted up. Well, I think they all seem firm. I haven't actually dug down to the bottom. But the top three seemed good. So hopefully the bottom three are as well. Yeah, that one even has some growth on it. That's good. Looks like this one down here might have some on it too. Do you all have some growth on you? Let's see. These two, some little white dots. Maybe something about to emerge from that one. That one, yeah, definitely. All right, what about you two? Yep, a little bit of something going on down there. And you, uh, not seeing anything, but it's firm, so it should be good. That's great, good to know. Also, doing that just reminded me I need to fertilize. That's something I should do today. So, okay, now I've gone through and caught everybody up and I'm ready to start the vlog. And we're probably like, what, between 10 and 15 minutes into it. I am going to get these planted up and then I need to put down fertilizer in the palm trees. I have the great palm fertile, it's down here, right there, let me get to the label. No, well you'll see it when I do it. You just go around, you sprinkle some on top of the soil and then get it watered in. So it makes sense to go ahead and do that now since I'm going to be spending quite a bit of time watering and then power washing the patio. But I did just pull these out from their water. so. Top priority should probably be to go ahead and get these guys planted up. All right, so what I was thinking with these curcumas was to do three on this side of the hill, right here, and then three more on the other side. The only problem with that is there's not as much sun over there. And Turbo, what do you... Get down. Turbo, off. Fall down and break your neck. He knows better than that. The sun, it's different. So hopefully it'll even out because this... Back here is more shady than right here. You can see it just looking over here, right? The sun on this container, shade on that container, but you move back in here and there's much more shade. The sun's going to be shifting here. It's going to continue to shift and get more direct up into the sky. So it's going to be more and more filtered light over here. And I think that'll be okay. The thing is these curcumas, the hidden cone curcumas, hidden flower, hidden, you know what I'm talking about they actually can take a good amount of light. It's more when I'm, we're pushing triple digits and they're near some pavement that I worry about them with afternoon sun. So afternoon shade is ideal in really hot climates, especially if the humidity is not on par. They're touted as being a shade loving plant. I've always gotten the best growth out of them when they're getting a good amount of sun, particularly in the morning. And both of these spots should get pretty good morning sun it's the sun, you know, it rises, like, right over, over there, over there. It's where the sun rises, and then they'll have sun until, like, I don't know, whatever time this is, <laughs> right there. If I'm not seeing the action out of them that I would like to, then I'll go ahead and just pull them up. But I'm thinking that this would be a good spot, also because this is an area where I am very, very attentive with the hose, <laughs> because the sprinklers don't hit this area very well, if at all, really, because... Well, the sprinkler head is its back there, and all this stuff is in front of it. So when I'm over here watering, I have to be on top of making sure that these spots right here are getting all the water that they need. It's trying to keep the impatience going. The impatience are a good indicator plant of the moisture content. The soil's pretty good over here. I've amended it many times, and things seem to grow fairly well as long as they stay watered. 
well enough. I think that will be good. I'd say the very top of the corn. You want to? Right there. So focus. Okay. I probably had that maybe two inches underground, something like that, if even. And I think that that will be fine. I have another hole dug here because I think that I want to... I know I want to get some colladiums put up over here on this end, too. Uh, I was going to put some over there, but what's the point? Because that leucocasia is going to end up shading everything as it is. Might pop a new guinea over here. Uh, I'm going to wander around. My placement with these new guineas is going to be very random. Intentionally random. What happened here? A whole bunch of these guys look like they got dug up. I don't know what's going on there. I did notice some stuff that I planted on the other side got dug up. So it might be some gophers or moles or something. Oh, it's probably the ground squirrels. I bet they're the ones who are doing that. Okay. The placement with these on this end is going to be not quite even with the other side, but that's just the way it's got to go because I want to definitely have a good amount of the caladiums planted just in front of them, or maybe around them, not necessarily in front of them because I don't want to block them. But I also want to have some more color over here in this area yeah that should be good i think those are going to look nice the nice thing about having these planted up here on this hill is that you'll be able to see the flowers better the inflorescence when they come up on these is sometimes kind of hidden by the foliage that's why they're called hidden cone gingers having them up higher be able to look into the flowers that was the whole idea there Anyways, hopefully there's enough light over here for him. I am going to hit everything with the IBA root and grow just because I have it, so may as well use it. Get them going faster, and I don't know, maybe I should just move on and handle those impatience in the caladiums. This is where I was, like, that's all I was going to do today was just get those in the ground, but I don't know. I've got the itch now, and I want to keep planting things. I love when the soil's loose enough that you can just get in there with your fingers and dig out a hole. Oh, that's so nice. So much easier, especially because I don't know where any of my hand trails are, so this is ideal. Appearance-wise, I know it probably seems odd to be mixing the new guineas with the regular impatience, but, well, I've planted regular impatience everywhere, <laughs> from there through there all the way up here, so if I'm going to be scattering them around to see where they do their best, then I think they're going to end up having to be planted together. don't really know another way around that. The thing with the New Guineas, I have been able to grow them very, very well up until like three years ago, maybe four years ago. And ever since then, they just aren't doing well for me. And I attribute that to the growth of the trees. So I put them in a spot where they get morning sun and then shade in the late afternoon. Like I used to sometimes put them up here on the hill. I was mostly having them more towards over here, <laughs> like underneath those um, arborvitaes. And uh, then, like, midsummer, they fizzle out and start to rot. And I think that it's because they end up starting to get... What was that? Well, my mouth stopped working. They start to get shaded out by the trees when the angle of the sun shifts. That's the only thing I can figure is that the trees have grown. So that's why I'm just planting them in random locations to be like, okay, well, where's the new sweet spot? Is there a new sweet spot? Because I know over there, they're just going to fry. They will cook. So sometimes the sun patients cook over there. So the New Guineas definitely won't do well. So it's just, a, yeah, it's just a matter of finding the right light for them. The New Guineas can take a lot of sun, like a lot of sun, not quite as much as the sun patient. I have people who tell me that that's almost identical. I don't, that's never been my experience. And if that were the case, then why would the sun patients even be a thing? Pretty close. I'll say pretty close to the same amount of sun, but they are also great plants for like those of you who live further south and it's really hot, shady areas, morning sun, filtered afternoon light. I think that my afternoon light is just too dark. It's not filtered enough. That's what I'm guessing. So uh, I'm just going to keep plopping them in random places until I planted all of them. All right, still have two left. And I was thinking maybe I might put these somewhere. Oh, oh hello. Hi, stalker. How are you doing, kitten? You looking at the flowers? You want to see the flowers, kitten? There they are. There's the flowers. Can't quite sniff them. As I was saying, these last two, I knew I should have bought more. I should have got some more. But uh, I think six is good. It's fine because they're not my favorite New Guineas. New Guineas, they come in some amazing, amazing patterns and flower colors. So I'll probably be getting more. 
Um, I'm thinking like maybe on this side of these deck planters. It's random, but I think that would work. And I would like a pop of color on the other side of them. The stuff I planted in the front, it's going to take some time to ever be visible from the front, right? The Colocasias, the Redemptions, they need to get bigger. The Dragon Wings is back there. Those need to get bigger. I'm also not a huge fan of the Red Dragon Wings. I don't know why I did red. The red and the green right here, it's giving me Christmas vibes. I'm just going to have to get over it. I knew that was going to be a thing this year when I put the <laughs> U's in these containers was that I was going to have to battle with wanting to pull them out and put something tropical and vibrant in the middle. But the whole point of them was so that there's more color out here throughout the entire year, not just... I don't, we don't, don't need to go in. I already did go into it, but I'm not going to go any further. So a New Guinea over here. Oh, wow. Well, that's embarrassing. Good opportunity. I need to get back there anyways. May as well pop a plant in that back corner. It's much more shady on this side than it is on this side. So again, I think that that is going to give me good representation of what they're going to do with the different levels of light. I mean, I can already tell you, the ones that get the most morning light and afternoon shade are probably going to do the best. And the ones that get more shade probably aren't going to do much of anything. Do you all have people in your lives who are well-meaning and they give you random gifts and you're the kind of person who will keep those gifts no matter what? I have no idea what to do with this thing. It travels around the yard, usually in spots where nobody will be able to see it. <laughs> I just found it over here, back here in this spot where it was out of sight and out of mind, which I think is the appropriate place to keep that. All right. Papua New Guinea. And, oh, Papua New Guinea. Yeah, Papua New Guinea. Pop the New Guinea in here and hope for the best with that one. See what happens. I do think that if it does do well, that will be really pretty, especially from inside the hot tub. That was kind of my thing is that when you're in the hot tub, having some more color in these planters would be nice. It would look really good. Not symmetrical, but what can you do when the light doesn't work? symmetrically as far as having even plant growth and it doesn't really matter right there are plenty of plants that can go sun or shade something really gooey on my finger there but they're not going to grow the same if you give them sun versus shade so a lot of like the sun and patience they can grow with a decent amount of shade but they're not going to look the same as if you were to grow them and the sun, this is, this might be challenging. I got a lot of things in my way here. A bit dramatic for just having to move a couple of palm fronds out of the way. That's not really all that difficult. All right, get this out of here. Shake off as much of that soil as I can. Oh, crap. I don't want to have to backfill it because I told y'all I'm out of soil. So oh, that's not going to work. I am going to have to backfill in order to make that work. Don't worry about the weed being thrown over there. It's fine. The tortoise will enjoy snacking on that. It's going to be hurt by that. Maybe I can slide some soil. This no, nope, that's not going to work. Crap. Made it work. Scavenged some potting soil from some old containers. I'll toss some compost or something in there to help liven it up. I think that that should be fine. It's an impatient, so it's going to need a lot of fertilizing anyways. All right, the Asclepius. I'm not hating how they're looking in this container, to be honest. I mean, that kind of looks nice but I want them planted up next to each other in the garden where they will have the potential to return the next year. I do not have a very good grip on those. That's a very loose grip I have on those. Hopefully I don't drop them. I was thinking maybe putting them down here mixed in with the dune grass but uh I don't know that dune grass has really done some growing. I'm not sure that these are going to fit in there. I mean, they will, but they'll be way back there and hidden. They're going to end up being shaded by everything, so uh, no, I don't think that's going to work. There's more space to work with on this side of the path, but this side of the path is very cold. I mean, wouldn't think it makes a huge difference, but things don't survive on this side like they do on this side. I've always had bananas over here. They don't come back very well over there. I could and probably should put... <laughs> okay, back it up a little bit. There we go. Could put them up here in the hill garden. I just... I don't really want to. It's really hard to dig up there. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to be able to see them as well. And I really, I just love looking at them. That would be a more appropriate spot for them, I suppose. I guess. Maybe. I don't know. I really don't want them up there. I'm going to just walk around and get them planted and we'll cut back and see what I end up doing with them. Okay. That'll have to do. I'll get to the colladiums tomorrow. I need to take this inside so that it, they don't dry out too much, right? 
Let's see, I got pretty much everything planted except for the two Ethelandras, just because well, I want to make sure I do exactly what I want with them, and they weren't things I just wanted to randomly plop down in any spot, and I kind of like them over here, so I may end up doing one right there and one right there. And then uh, I put one of those Asclepius over here, right there, in this corner. I just love it. This spot over here does stay very warm. It's going to get a makeover, hopefully, in the next few weeks. You might be able to see what's going on here if I... I don't know. Maybe you won't. It's hard to see depth on camera, but there's a steep hole in there. This, like, there's a good 8 to 10 inches of mulch in here that I need to go through and just pull all of it out. Because, uh, well, it's from when I used to keep bananas over here. When I used to... Well, I mean, they're still here, right? Okay, but what I mean is that when I used to mulch them to try and preserve them during the winter time, I don't do that anymore. I learned that when you have a narrow bed like this and it's a pathway, that just doesn't work out because you constantly have the garden bed overflowing onto the patio. The patio is, you know, a few inches in there. That banana might be growing on top of the patio. It wouldn't surprise me. So that's going to be a pretty big project. It's not just a matter of scooping mulch. There's also sprinkler lines and all kinds of old tubing and pipes that I need to remove in the process. So... That's why it's going to be a big project. But I figure I'm going to want this right here. It's a very warm location. Maybe it will come back in this spot. I originally dug that hole to put the Fair's Dream Colocasia in there. And if you watched last week's video, you know that it turned out that the other Pharaoh's Dream that Brian's Botanical sent me was actually a red pharaoh, which I don't want. It's just, it's not a plant that appeals to me. And uh, I realized that this is actually perfect because I would prefer the Pharaoh's Dream be centered with this window here. So when you're looking out the window, you have that pretty foliage just on the lower like what fourth fifth of the window i think that'd be really pretty then get some flowers or something planted in front of it so i thought that that was a good spot for that one like i said the curse of Akias, as far as those asclepias go aren't necessarily hardy here but sometimes they are that's a good spot to give them a try i put the others up here in the hill garden which is very fitting because the hill garden is mostly stuff for the pollinators or just things that i want to grow that don't fit anywhere else in the garden it's one right there that was one right there. I have some uh, regular Asclepius tuberosa back here as well, the native, one that's native here to Missouri. I also put some gladiolas over there that I never showed you up. There's a big patch right there, another patch over there that's not coming up, and then I put the rest of those bulbs that I talked about at the beginning of the video right here. So they're by this wall, which I think will look really nice when those come up. Have layers, gladiolas here, gladiolas there, and gladiolas maybe over there if those ever come up. And then the $25 foxtail fern. There it is. That does look really pretty in there. I still can't believe it was 25 bucks, but there it is. I think that that's going to look very nice. And yeah, that's it. Now I need to sprinkle some fertilizer on top of some plants. Not going to be anything to see there. Do some watering and then I'll do some power washing. I'll try and get some clips of the power washing just because I know it's very satisfying seeing the dirt and everything get scrubbed up. But uh, I am kind of pressed for time at this point because I ended up doing a lot more planting than I expected. I was having fun. It's just fun. I really want to get my hands in the dirt and get things done. That and I got so much done last week, which was really just two days ago for me, but a week ago for y'all. And uh, I didn't want to have more plants piling up, especially because I'm going to need to go out to some nurseries at some point to get some more potting mix and things like that, which means, you know, I'll be bringing some more stuff home if anything stands out to me. So don't want to fall behind. Yep, that's all that is. I'm going to dig into my fertilizers here, start watering, and then do some power washing and enjoy the rest of the day with the family. Okay, all right. This is a gardening channel. I can't just skip past the fertilizing. Uh, J.R. Peters, Jack's Classic, Classic Coat. It's an all-purpose that has uh, some extra stuff and help keep the plants nice and green. You're not going to get much from me today. I'm sorry. I did some planting. There's still a lot to do. And then Perfect Palm been using this instead of palm gain this year just because well money and it seems to be basically the same thing with this i just put a little bit just a little bit and do this about once a month sprinkle that around the top doesn't need very much to my understanding from the instructions and then you can either go in with your hands and work it in or i just use the high pressure from the hose to go ahead and throw it around and get it down into the top of the soil Let's water it in. That's it. Not much to it.
I d was that was that a rat? If that was a rat, that thing was fucking huge. Was it was either a rat or a small possum? What the f what was that? Listen, I'm not a country boy. I like nature, but I d no. I was just came out here to get Colby. I had Colby out here, and I got in bed. And I went, oh no, I need to get the tortoise. And bring him in, cause I worry about predators. Even though he's getting pretty big, and. I was standing out here just enjoying the view. Everything's looking so nice and clean and fresh and just marvelous. I love nighttime. Nighttime in the summer is one of my favorite things. The air is warm and everything feels really clean and fresh. It just smells nice, right? And it smells the salt from the pool and, and it's just clean. Like it's nice to stand back and marvel at a hard day's work and then I was getting ready to, I was just like, okay, that's enough. I've had enough fun looking around and enjoying everything. Let me just go in here to get the tortoise. And I was looking at that going, I don't really feel like stepped in there, but I'm going to. And then I saw that creature, but I did, I, it seemed way too dark to be a possum. It was like black. I don't think I got it on camera very well. I saw it when it first came around right here, but I couldn't see its face. I just saw the body and the tail and uh, that's it. It had the body of a rat and the color of a rat, but the size of a small possum. Like maybe, you know, a baby po possums aren't usually black. It was black. Whatever it was, it was black. I don't, I think the only reason I'm being dramatic about this is because I love nature and I love animals, but it freaks me out not knowing what it was. What was that? Y'all probably don't even know what I'm talking about. You probably couldn't even see it on the camera. And it was moving slowly, too. That's the other thing where I was like, well, that seems more like a possum. Because, you know, it was just kind of like, oh, I'm going to go over here and climb over the tortoise. Like, it, it uses the tortoise to get over the wall. I think it did. Hopefully it's not crouched down by Colby's head in the corner by the croton pot where I have to stick my fingers to get Colby out of there. I'm pretty sure it went over the wall. Whatever it is, I don't want to piss it off. It just seemed way too big to be a rat. Like, way too big. That thing was big. For a possum, it was small. For a rat, that thing is huge. And I've, I've actually, I've never seen a wild rat before. I've only ever, you know, seen, like, pet rats and lab rats, which I know, that's sad. If it's a possum, I don't care if it's a rat. I don't want to go over there. Both of those are animals that can, they can mess you up. But possums, they're pretty docile. Rat, they're quick. That thing, whatever it was, though, was real. It was moving slow. Maybe it was just moving slow, though, because it knew I was here and it was being shy. Right? That's probably what happened. Maybe I could turn my light on. I might be able to see better. Can I do that while I'm... I can. Okay, is there any... Do we see anything? Am I safe to go over there? Are there any eyes reflecting back at me over in the corner where Colby is? I think it came from over here. That's what I'm guessing. It was probably just a possum, but why was it black? I've never seen a black possum before. Have you all seen, you ever seen a black possum? All right, did some Googling. I don't think it possibly could have been a rat, given how big it was. Like I said, I don't know if y'all even got to see it. I also, I know I'm being ridiculous about this. I very much appreciate nature, and I'm also very excited about this. I really don't want to stick my hand back there right now. But uh, I, don't, I get excited for wildlife out here. This neighborhood I live in isn't that old and it's just sort of coming into its own as far as the trees finally maturing so the rare occasion that I do see a possum I usually get pretty excited about it. like I've never seen snakes out here I've never seen lizards I saw a scorpion like 10 years ago which was pretty random because those are not common up here but that probably showed up with some of my plants I'm guessing I, you just don't see much it's birds and rabbits which is fine but actual fun Naturey critters? No, I never see them. I have like motion cameras and stuff all over the place. They pick up an, on like an occasional cat and deer. They're new. Like within the last few years, those have been showing up. Though I know that there's possums around, but I've never seen a possum that was one that slender, had fur that short, and that was black. What else could it have been? The only thing that I can find that I can see a picture of that looks similar to what I just saw were nutrias. And nutrias don't live this far north. Like, that's an invasive swamp critter. They're not up here. And much bigger. But, like, a baby nutria, maybe. No, there's no baby nutrias out here. That's not a thing. There's no way. 
sound like an idiot. I was just messing. That's not a nutria. I know it's not a nutria. But I don't know. Comment down below. What the heck could that have been? I, there are black possums. I looked it up, but this didn't look like any of those. It doesn't help that I wasn't able to see its face. But it moved slow like a possum. It just did not look like a possum. I've seen plenty of possums. Just because I don't see them here at my house, I see them all over the place at other people's homes and friends who live out in the country and e heck even just people who live down the streets there's possums all over the place they have like a, a an undercoat like like a what's it called a double coat yeah so there's like stringy hair that sticks up above the short hair this had what looked like a slick black coat like a rat but size wise there's just no freaking way what the heck was it is it could it be Am I being watched? Are there more of them? I'm sure there's, I'm sure there are lots of animals that are watching me right now. That's just the way it is when you're outside at nighttime. I'm going to leave Colby out here to fend for himself tonight. There's no way I'm going back there. It's the unknown, human nature. If I don't know what it is, then it bothers me. Like I love swimming. I love open bodies of water, but I'm not getting in there if the water isn't clear. If I can't see down like at least 30, 40 feet, nope, not doing it. I mean, that, in like a lake or something, fine. In the ocean? No. Gosh, dang it, it's so late. I don't feel like dealing with anything that involves adrenaline right now. Why couldn't it have been a tree frog? I'd get so excited to see a tree frog. I've seen like two of those ever out here. Ooh, just thought of a fun project though. I have a live animal trap in the basement from when that kitten showed up a couple of years ago. I think I should probably set that up. I have plenty of cat food. I'll throw some cat food in it and... Maybe we'll find it. We'll see whatever it is. Whatever it is, I'm not going to hurt it. I'm going to let it go. If it's a rat, I'm going to let it go very, very, very far away. If it's a possum, it can, it's fine. It can stay here. I'm not afraid of a possum. By the way, I am, when I said opossum, remember that there will be people who want to correct me. I'm referring to the Virginia opossum, not the possum, possums. Those, those don't live here. That's not a thing on this continent. Oh, you know what? I just remembered I have a kick-ass flashlight in the house. that would be a great time to give it a try. I actually don't know if it's kick-ass. Is that even a thing people say anymore? I don't think it is. Spotlight. Ryobi. And just pop this battery out of here. Can I do that with one hand? And pop that out of there? Okay. Oh yeah. That should do the trick. Neighbors are gonna be like, what the hell is Jeff up to? Okay. Any critters? I'm looking for eyeballs. Are there eyeballs shining back at me from anywhere? No? Nothing? Went from being intimidated to suddenly being kind of disappointed. I want to know what it was. I am going to step through here very, very carefully. Now that I know nature has moved in. Right over here, back there. What's going on over there? It's a pine cone. It's just a pine cone. It's fine. No, no, okay. Colby, god damn it, why'd you have to wedge yourself so far back there? Keep looking over here because that would be a great spot. I wouldn't blame them for wanting to hang out back here. Got lots of cover and safety and lots of nooks and crannies. It seems like an ideal place for a critter to want to sleep. Okay, well, I don't see anything. So, just come over here and give this pot a twist. And if there is anything, It'll get out. Of, I had to do this anyways. I couldn't get in there and reach Colby with that pot in the way. He really wedged himself in there. Go ahead. Keep scooting the crow out of the way. I don't see anything. Maybe I should go ahead and just pull the fatsia out of the way too. What if it went over there? I'm pretty sure it went over his shell and onto the wall. The reason I'm saying that it there's no way it's a rat is because the thing was when it crawled over Colby, it used Colby as a stepping stone. Its body was a little bit longer than the length of his shell. He's, it's so kind of tortoise. He's not small. <sighs> okay, I think we're safe. Wish you could talk, Colby. I'd love to know whatever it was that just crawled on top of you. Checked him out. His scoots and everything looked good, so it doesn't seem like anything has been chewing on him. Which, if it was a rat, I think it would have at least had a taste of him. Probably. Possum? I don't know. Maybe not. Possums are good. Like, they'll eat snakes and stuff. But, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Colby. Didn't mean to startle you. Go ahead, go back to sleep. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna 
pull that live animal trap out of the basement though because i do think it would be interesting to see what it is well it's not gonna hurt whatever it is just want to see it because if it's a possum i would like to see that possum because this like i said it did not look like a possum at all okay i'm not above admitting to when i have perhaps been a little bit ridiculous it was a possum I rewatched the video where I could see it, the tip of its tail. It had a little curl in it, which they don't always have, but I don't, I guess rats can do that, but possums, you know, like that's their thing, prehensile tails. And rats, you know, they use their tails for balance and they can wrap them around things, but they, it's not like an appendage type thing like it is with the possum. Anyways, and there's that, the length of the tail from what I could see looked short, chonky with a little twist in it, like a possum would do if it were about to jump off of something and I got like a glimpse of maybe a face and it was kind of white it was just weird that it was black and had a smooth shiny coat but maybe it was a black possum because those do exist possums come in lots of colors that had just been swimming maybe it had just like been in the pool or was just wet I, may, that, that's possible okay enough of that deviation I had a busy morning I went ahead and I ran some errands didn't film it very well, but here's a, a couple minutes max of random clips that aren't going to fit in with anything else in the video. Look at this beautiful silvery foliage. Blue chill. You see that? There's like a silvery glisten to it. That's a neat salvia. I mean, abrupt change. I'm at a nursery, if you couldn't tell. Need to get plants for those hydrangea planters, the two, the strawberry vanillas that I have. And uh, we're going kind of big here. It's later in the season, wants them to fill in quickly. Also, I need another six pack of Vinca and I needed potting soil, so good day for a nursery. I know what I'm doing with everything in the cart so far, except for those two salvia. Those are just too cool to not get. It's two enough, two should be plenty. Need some trailers. Don't have any of the vistas. They're pretty cleaned out. Because, you know, it's hot out, so slowing down with the trucks at a lot of the places here. Okay, I know, I left the nursery, and then I had to drive to an area I've never been in before, so it was just chaos. But look at, look how cool this place is. It's machinery everywhere. I already passed, like, the neat stuff, the cranes and everything, but I thought it was neat. There's nothing to show you inside. It's just a desk. You walk up and say, hey, this is what I need, and then you pull up to a big door, and somebody comes out and loads the car. I got sand. I got a whole bunch of sand. That's why I drove 40 minutes from home was to get sand. But it was only 15 minutes from the nursery. So it made sense since I was there and it was only 15 minutes away to go ahead and pick up the sand while I was out here. I'm actually, I'm on a real road now, so I'm gonna put the phone down. Yeah, I told you it didn't really fit in with anything else in the video, but figured y'all might wanna see. I don't know why. Well, that salvia, that salvia was really nice. I think I need to put more of this down. I went ahead after I did the whole thing talking about that I was going to fertilize yesterday and decided to just film a quick video about the fertilizers that I'm using and why I use them. And that will be in its own video. So when I do the vlogs and fertilizing, I won't reiterate the same things over and over again. I'll just say, here, go check this out. I think that will be nice. I did some pre-watering last night, which isn't normal. This is clean. Everything under there is organized. Stop it. Stop judging me. It's fine. Pre-watered because, the, uh, well, everything was pretty dry. I didn't have much time to do any watering yesterday, so I went through and gave everything a drink. You can water at night, especially if it's warm outside. If your plants are thirsty, you need to water them. There's, that's a whole thing. Like, does it not rain at nighttime? What? What? Why? There's this been this thing for years thing don't water your plants at night i understand it being don't water your plants in the evening as is if like that's the watering you're giving them to provide them the water that they need to grow but if the soil's dry and the plants are wilty water them uh, i mean there's some exceptions right temperatures do make a difference climate makes a difference the type of plant makes a difference but it's summer right now they were thirsty give everything a drink, which means it's pr a pretty opportune time, so I'm one of my words here, to go ahead and do some liquid fertilizing. I'm not going to film any of that because I talked about it in the video that will be after this one. I do a lot of fertilizing in these videos. Uh, but what I do want to do is get some work done on some planters out here. These guys, they need to be potted up, planted up, 
need to get some color and something going on underneath them, as well as the hydrangea trees down at the end. That's why I was at the nursery, just picking up stuff so I can get those filled up and get them looking nice and colorful. Not that they necessarily need it, because when those hydrangeas are in full bloom, you really don't need anything underneath them, because <laughs> they're so colorful, but it's just, I don't know, I've always done it, so it just felt weird to not underplant them, but I actually think it probably would be fine to not underplant them. These have never blown over. They've been sitting here for what, a month, two months, three months? Never blown over. So that is fun to catch on camera. So exciting. That's their first topple. If that breeze just came in from just the right direction. Also, it would just take a moment to appreciate. So fresh and so clean, right? It's so nice. There is a, this is a double-edged sword though. The pavement color is too light, and now that it's clean, I'm back to it searing my eyeballs if I don't have sunglasses on. And even with my sunglasses, I'm squinting quite a bit. So maybe leaving some dirt on it's not a bad idea. And not like I would leave, like, actual dirt, but instead of going through and slowly trying to really get everything out of the cracks, maybe just stand back further and wash the loose stuff away and go ahead and just let the other stuff that's going to stain it settle in. I don't know, but this is blinding, but it's pretty, but I, I can't see. It hurts my face. Okay, so here's what I've got to work with. Ooh, look at the new pot. Isn't that pot beautiful? It's a nice, almost lime green with the crackle texture in it. And it, really, Turbo? <laughs> Get out of the way, man. Ripples on the bottom. There's that crackle texture. All right, he wants to be the star of the show. You get it. It's a nice pot. I like the color of that a lot. It will go well with the other pottery on the other end of the patio for they're all different colors. So with these planters over here, I am late to the game on planting them up. So I decided to just go really big, like so big that I don't know if what I've picked up for these pots is, may not even fit. I don't know. Can you see what I'm working with here? Look it. Got some nice shrimp plants and then some deep rose sun impatience and compact orange. Those are pretty much the only options. There wasn't much left at the nursery this time of year for larger sun impatience. And then I did manage to find four of the Supertunia Vista bubble gums. That was it. That's all they had. So I'll be able to do, I guess, one on each side of the planters. That was a bad shot. One on each side. And then maybe at some point I'll find some sweet potato vines to pop in there in the other spots. I don't know. I'm fine with that. I like to be able to see the pottery. I don't necessarily like for the pottery to get overrun by trailers that often. And then I did pick up some more Strobilanthes just because they had these really big ones that were only like seven bucks. And I was like, well, that's a pretty good deal. Look how big this thing is. That's a nice big looking plant. I don't see that working out in those containers. There's just no way I'm going to be able to fit two of the uh, lollipops of these shrimp plants in each one those big sun patients although the sun patients they are big their pots are small so that's gonna work out in my favor for getting things planted the shrimp plants the lollipop plants pakistaki's ludia that's what these are <laughs> they're very nice there's a bee swarming around my ear has me a little bit paranoid yellow shrimp plant typically when you hear shrimp plant that generally means that we're talking about a completely different type of plant but these are also called shrimp plants because they have a pretty similar inflorescence but they're a different plant this is why i alternate between calling them shrimp plants and calling them lollipop because back in the day briefly <laughs> i heard people call these yellow lollipop plants i don't really know why i think just yellow shrimp plant is much more common so what i was thinking i would do oh and the salvia hold on before i move on the salvia isn't it beautiful I love the foliage on that. It's green, but it has that silvery gray hue to it. What was that? Metal squeaking over here. I think that these are good options for these containers because they do like sun, but they'll also do just fine in part shade. And one side of these steps gets a lot of sun. The other side, not so much. This side is over here, right, right here. Lots of sun over there. Not anywhere near as much, but the plants themselves stay fairly even up top. It's more down low where things are more shaded. It's, the sun is weird when you live at the bottom of a hill. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody else out there? So a couple of those in the middle, sun patients all around. And I got enough where I could do four in each container instead of three, which is what I usually do because I want this to go ahead and just look nice and full right from <laughs> the start. 
You also need to be very careful here. This is not how you should be carrying plants around. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's all going to look a little bit junky right after it gets planted up because these plants are, I mean, they're getting leggy. They've been sitting in their nursery containers for a minute now. So they're going to need some recovery time, and that's okay. I can roll eight. Oh, and I got the very last six pack of the trailing Vinca to use in the Gossia palm planters. I only bought one when I was there before, and then I set it down in the container, and I was like, I'm going to need one six pack per pot. So I, don't, I got lucky. I got the very last one. Okay. You got the rundown. I think I'm just going to plant them up and cut back and have a look at how these are looking. This is its probably going to take me a while because I really don't want to make a huge mess in the patio after I just power wash it. Although I stopped with the power washing right here. That's where I stopped. So I still have to do everything from there and all the way around because, you know, I'm going to be making a mess. I'm going to be getting dirt everywhere. Did you find your baseball? You need to get it. You can't just let the ball get away. What are you doing? Those are little league moves. Turbo, go get it. Get your ball. That's not how baseball works. Get the ball. You're not supposed to let it go. You can't just drop it. What's wrong with you? Okay, I'm sorry. Sidetracked. Yeah, I'm going to plant these up. We'll cut back. See what ends up happening with them. Sidetracked by a really cute bug. What is it? It has the body of a cricket and the head of an alien. What is it? I don't know, but it's pretty freaking cute. Look how tiny it is. I realized that I think like a good two or three of these clips in this video have started off with me throwing toys to Turbo because that's mostly what I do out here. Uh, what do we think? Remember, it's gonna take them some time. They've gotta come into themselves. Got a size difference here between the Deep Rose, Sun Impatient, the Compact Orange, but those will even themselves out. I'm pretty sure the Deep Rose is also one of the Compacts. Deep Rose is one of my favorite Sun Patients. And I didn't have any of them planted out here yet, so this works out well. I'm trying to find, like, does it look better in the shade if I stand over it? It's so hard to get their co Well, come on. Cameras are made to adjust for lighting, so it's like you just get a glimpse of it, and then it's going to darken up. Oh, there it goes. It's a corally pink that has a lot of sparkle in the flower, and it's hard to really get that to show on camera. But it's just, it's beautiful. It's one of my favorites always has been so I'm happy to have some of those put out here I like the way they go with the orange they're actually basically what I used to do over here was go deep rose compact orange something like that sometimes I'd mix it up and do compact pink instead of the deep orange but that's a the that's essentially what's happening that's a flight I thought it was a Japanese beetle I can tell the Japanese beetles are here I'm seeing their damage but I haven't actually seen them yet. That's usually how it goes. I usually start seeing the holes and then eventually I start to see the beetles. I get sidetracked so incredibly easy. I'm so sorry. That's, you know, all there is to it. Super Tuny Vista bubblegum on each side. I wanted to plant them this side and that side, but sunlight wise that wasn't going to do much for me in that container over on the other side. So I went with the front and the back and that way you can see them from inside the pool and outside the pool, which I thought would be nice. The pack of stackies beautiful plants. I'm looking forward to that pop of yellow up above the pink and the orange with the pink trailer down below. I am thinking about maybe instead of doing sweet potato vines on the sides of these containers, perhaps maybe Scavola? Come over here and look at this one. Stand in the shade, get myself out of the sun. It's not as good of a view for you guys though. So I'll get in closer so you can see that flower better on the pack of stackies. Aren't they fun? Really fun plants. I love them sturdy sign to part sign they can take some shade but they get more leggy they'll bloom better with at least i'd say five to seven probably like six yes yeah, six we'll set on six six hours of morning sun afternoon shade they can usually take some afternoon sun too it kind of depends on your climate but what i was saying was i'm torn between uh, just leaving the sides of the pots bare because i do like to be able to see the containers I think that that's nice. These are really big, nice blue containers, and having that contrast between the pot and the petunia it looks good, but I already have the yellow and the pink and the orange, and there's more pink. Like, wouldn't some blue or something purple be really pretty in here because there's already so much color? I feel like blue would just get lost coming down the sides of these blue containers, though, so Scavola probably wouldn't make sense. There's a pink Scavola, but that would blend in with the... Vista bubble gums. The green from the sweet vine would be fine, but they also, I end up getting really annoyed with them <laughs> come the end of the year because you have to prune on them so much they become 
a bit too intense for these containers sometimes. Creeping Jenny could be an option, but I really want something with some more color. So I'm trying to think of something that's purple that will like the same amount of water as these plants here. Verbena is a great option, but I don't think they will appreciate the amount of water that I have to give these hydrangea trees, especially now that they are underplanted with plants that also will want a good amount of water. Maybe Lobelia? I feel like Lobelia would just fry over here in this container, though. I don't know. That's just one of those things where I've, I'm at a nursery and I'm looking around and see something I like, I'll get it. And if not, I'm really happy with how these look. They're <laughs> going to need some time, like I said, because things are... Well, you saw it in the clip from before, right? Before I planted them up, the pinks were nice and big, the oranges were nice and short, but they were in small containers. They were getting leggy for their containers, so it's going to take them a few weeks to even out, but they are planted close enough together that when they do even out, it should be instead of it looking like an alternating thing of color where it goes orange pink orange pink they should start to blend together and get to see the colors nice and mixed up to an extent the sun patients the colors don't really mix up as well as say something like the regular impatients do just regular walerianas where when you have them planted close enough together they start to blend and it's harder to tell that you have multiple plants going sometimes the sun impatients and new guineas they have more of a bushy thicker stem so they don't really intertwine as well to give that effect so if that doesn't regardless i'm gonna like it it's gonna look great once those fill out some more i'm just happy to have them underplanted, and i really love the pack of stackies in here i like the height that you get you have the yellow the green with the yellow i should say and then all the color underneath it and the flowers yeah these are good i really like them also separate note these things are getting huge. I think these are going to put on a really nice show this year. They're already starting to pop open. And man, this one's really put on some height. I was pretty heavy handed on their spring prune this year. Uh, should I save all this for the garden tour? I probably should. I'm just saying I'm pretty excited for how these are going to look. And I am going to move them when it goes close to 100 this year. Last year I didn't do that and they fried and the flowers looked like burnt marshmallows. They just look toasted and nasty so I need to remember when it gets hot to move them around. Yeah, things are looking so good out here. So much color. Everything's really starting to do its thing now that the heat's starting to set in. And try and stay focused. Just get the jobs done that I started with. I can walk around and talk about the plants next week. Okay. Two more planters, the pool planters. It, there really isn't much to say with these. I am going to plant some catharanthus in here. Probably this one, which I believe is soiree pink, white purple. Soiree kawaii, white purple. It looks pink to me, but they call it white purple, and that's fine. Then I'll throw a roeo in here. I'm going to plant around the container with these trailing vinca. And uh, I need to remember that I have those tattoo orange vinca that I want to put in here as well. This is going to be very time consuming and tricky because there's not much room to work with in these pots as far as digging goes. The things that are in the six packs, I don't think will be a big problem. Even the roeos, they need a decent sized hole, but it's a Tritoscantia essentially. You can just pop them out and stick them in the soil and they'll grow even without the roots, as long as they stay consistently moist. So, I don't know. I think that that's something I should probably just get going on. It's going to be very similar to what I did last year. I really liked what I did last year. And there aren't a lot of annuals around that scream beach vibe to me. And I want these to have a beach vibe. So, I'm just, I'm sticking with what I know and what I like. Oh, someone's hibiscus bloom this morning. Looking very nice. Can we get it through the wires? No? Maybe, can I get in really close? Can you see it? It's gonna, put it, no, that doesn't really work. Well, you get the point. It's a very pretty flower. All right, there we go. That was my distraction for this five minute portion of the video. I'm going to, I guess, just start working. I'm start plopping stuff in and hopefully they come out and look good. Huh. I don't know what to, oh, that's very, very backlit. The patio, it's so blinding that it's blocking out the, color for the camera. I'm torn now. I don't know if I want to do the soiree, what are we called, the kawaii white purple, which looks very pink to me, 
or to do the blueberry, blueberry kiss. I like the way that that looks over here. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to do. I think that this color plays well with that tattoo orange better. You can see, like right here, and put them together. Bring this one up here. See, I just, I don't know. I like this pairing right here better than this pairing. Okay, you know what? There's really actually not that much of a difference. This is just a few shades darker. Also, the Blueberry Kiss has been doing something weird. I have another one right here. And look at the flowers. They changed colors. The ones I planted last year didn't do that. Although the ones I planted last year just died. They were not happy campers about having their roots messed with, so I'm being very careful about making sure I dig these holes nice and big. I'm going to be very, very cautious about disturbing their roots. Oh yeah, I moved the table, the sun. It's just blinding, I can't see anything. So I needed some shade over here. It's just like frying my eyeballs. And I don't know, this is as far as I've gotten. Sometimes people like being brought along on the decision making part. One thing I did last year that I don't want to do again is overfill it because I liked the tops of these being open. I have white sand and seashells in there and uh, I'm trying to remember what it was that overtook them. I think it was actually mostly the trailing vinca that did that and that's an easy enough thing to fix so I probably shouldn't stress or think too much about that right now. I have enough of the tattoo orange that I can put two if not more in each container. I can have them like this right in the middle like so and then maybe do the blueberry kiss like right here. That would look good. So I also have to factor in the trailer and what those are all going to look like together. Yeah, they're just, on camera, it doesn't look like there's much of a difference, but in person, the one on the right is much more of a light pink color. Almost too light though, it's kind of pale. Ha, huh. and the ones that I don't use in these containers, I'm going to plant in front of this garden bed over here with a bunch of roeos. So that's something I need to keep in mind too, I guess. And some of them will be underplanted under some coconut palms. Hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll see what I do. And maybe this will be done when we come back. Here we go. I think that's going to do it. Do we think? I think it looks very nice. I'd like to put some more shells up there. Mostly just because this is a silica quartz sand, which is very abrasive. Bad to inhale. You don't want it in your eyes, so... I'm going to order some really tiny seashells, I think, to top dress the sand and then maybe not do the sand because I don't, well, I don't want to have to worry about people getting it in their lungs or in their eyes. Turns out that the stuff they sold me is more of an industrial product than a let's make little beach planters in the backyard kind of product. Who would have thought from a construction store? They wouldn't have just had sand that you could use for fairy gardens. <laughs> Lesson learned, but for now, it looks pretty, doesn't it? Pretty sure I already talked about everything that's in here. The Roeo, this is Roeo Discolor. That's what it's called, Discolor. The Tattoo Orange Vinca, the uh, Kawaii Blueberry Kiss, and the Kawaii Soiree Light Purple. The Vinca, what type is these? The Mediterranean Hot Rose. Oh, I think the ones that are over here, Mediterranean Halo Rose. I think they look similar enough that, oh yeah, they're not the same. That's okay. It's close enough. I don't think anybody will be able to tell. These are Rose Halo. That's okay. Yeah, I don't I don't think that matters. I could always flip them. Like, pull half and pull half and mix them together if need be. I don't think I need to, though. Because I think they look similar enough that nobody's really going to know a difference. I moved the Heliconias over. Got the Chacos right here. I just, I like the way they look. With the Roeos and the Tattoo Orange. Vinca and everything. The different sand castle in this one. I don't have a beach ball for this pot. Just the one. I've had that tiny beach ball for years. I cannot believe that I haven't lost that thing yet. I love it. I think they look great. It's going to take them some time to fill in and everything. And I don't really want them to fill in all that much in the inside anyways. I want them to be open whether I have the sand there or if I top dress it with some shells or a whitish stone. Something to give the appearance of sand without the abrasiveness of this silica. The, I think that it will look good with whichever one. The tattoo orange idea here is they're going to come up probably be about this high and I think that they look good with that blueberry kiss. I was able to get more of the uh, 
plants into this container than in the other one. The way the roots have set themselves into this pot, there just wasn't a lot of room for digging. So I only have the two smaller catharanthus, the blueberry kiss, the light sweat. Okay, that's getting annoying. I'm trying to talk to people here. Get out of here. Soiree light purple over here, whereas over there I got the soiree light purple and another one of the blueberry kiss. He's just being very persistent. Doesn't matter. All I'm saying is there's one more catharanthus in this container than in the other. The light purple and then two of the blueberries in here. And this is that other blueberry that really uh, it's changed color. It's not very blueberry-ish anymore. I have two tattoo orange on each side. So there's two right here, two on the other side. That's a big improvement from last year where I only had the one because I bought one and then didn't realize how much I would love it and went back to buy more and they didn't have them. So it's really nice to be able to get them in a six pack this year and have so many more to play with. I have one extra. So I may end up just tossing it into one of these. And I know it'll be noticeable if there's four or five in one and then four in the other. I don't think anybody will be able to tell. So cute and so fun. I love these containers. I love the little beach theme that they have to them. It's just fun and colorful and playful. And what a difference, right? I didn't put, I was about to say there aren't that many plants in here. I suppose there are. I have an entire six pack of Vinca for the big Vinca, the Roeo, and yeah, I guess, I guess it is a lot, but they're all plants that will stay small and have more of a mounding habit, so they're not going to grow up big and hide those really nice trunks. I love those trunks. I wouldn't want them to be hidden away by anything else. That's the reason that I don't do the sun impatience in these like I do with some of my other planters or a lot of my other planters. It's because they get so big, they end up blocking out the beauty of the trunks on these. I want things that will just stay nice and low. Oh, and add a cute little pop of color. Doesn't the heliconia look good in there with the blueberry? I think that looks nice. Good color combo. This, this entire spot right here. It looks so good. Yeah, they're nice. I like them. Feel good about everything we've gotten done with the planters down that end over here and all the little stuff that got popped in the ground. I did get the majority of the colladiums planted. I didn't film it because I just, there's really nothing to see. There's little bulbs. But y'all see them, of course, when they grow up and get bigger. Over here, I wish I had a resolution. And uh, I don't. I wanted to pull that windmill palm out, put the adenidia palm there, but I just don't see this adenidia right there. I don't see it working over there. And I need to repot the windmill palm. So I need to pull that out anyways. The pot that I told y'all that I ordered at the beginning of the week, it's apparently won't be here for a few more days. The video's gotta come out before then. So I'm just, I'm just gonna postpone this project, which is fine. I have no issue with that. I feel like I did an awful lot here and uh, pick up next week and I guess repot a windmill palm and scoot some other palms around and see what looks good over there. Oh, breeze. Oh, that breeze feels so nice. Yeah, hey, thanks for hanging out. Interesting few days here at home getting some stuff done. Is this, is there a weird, is this bothering anybody else's brain? We're seeing the ball with the shadow directly underneath it? Maybe it's because, all right, I don't think it's as weird through the camera. It's my sunglasses made everything look extra sharp and it was just it was too much for my brain. Hey, comment down below, say hi, I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? You getting things planted? Is it too hot to plant? We're about in that spot here. I mentioned I want to put these roeos down here and I do want to do that, but I can't really finish working in this area until I'm done moving and pulling plants in and out from this area over here. So they'll just have to wait, that's fine. We gotta let down, are you tired? He's sleepy. He's been out here swimming so much. He's ready for a nap. I think I'm ready for a shower. I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.